How y'all doing today? My name's OCD and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to utilize Python text to image animation to enhance your VFX. I'm going to start off by heading over to replicate.com. I'm going to leave a link in the description, but replicate.com is an image to prompt generator. This gives me some keywords to keep in mind. Some other keywords that I've found luck with trying include tendril, humanoid, and lace. It's really all about trial and error. So the only way to figure out what the computer is going to spit out is to put in different inputs and just see what it spits out. Eventually you'll get better at it and you can kind of force the direction of where the prompt goes. But at the beginning, it's a lot, a lot of figuring it out. Don't be afraid to pick random random synonyms to other words and just kind of go with it. I found the more dynamic the better and the more it can describe texture the better. So just high contrast, heavy adjectives, telling a story. Once we've found a good list of adjectives and keywords we'd like to fill out our prompt, we're going to want to head over to Sport Racer 48's Patreon. If you aren't already, you need to subscribe in order to get the link to this Google Collab notebook. But with that being said, there are some free alternatives to stable diffusion driven animation, such as Disco Diffusion. I, however, have never actually touched Disco Diffusion, so I'm not going to talk about Disco Diffusion. And in today's video, we're going to cover PYTTI5, which was given to us so graciously by Sport Racer 48 And it does come with a great Discord community. And don't be intimidated by the name. Google Collab Notebooks are often designed to be as easy to navigate for a novice as possible. And this is really all about trial and error. There are obviously some settings that I would recommend keeping the same. For example, I prefer VQGON. I wouldn't push the resolution beyond 800 times 450. I have heard that there are some settings that are less strenuous on the machine and that allows you to push the resolution higher so you don't actually have to upscale. I haven't been able to find settings that work without crashing the script, so I am going to just stick to what I know works. I like to play around with the direct stabilization rate as well as the flow stabilization rate. There is an animation setting that you will have to turn on from 2D or 3D into video source, and once you turn it on to video source, you're going to want to upload your source video into a Google Drive that you know the location of. Then you're going to go into the side panel on the Google Collab Notebook, open up the path and copy it to insert into your prompt. This is going to allow you to use the video to drive the animation as well as the textures and colors that appear. Obviously, you can override the colors or even put in an image prompt to drive it in an entirely different direction. There really is so much to play with. So again, I've done maybe hundreds of AI renders and I would recommend that you really do the same to feel it out and kind of get a sense of what style you're going for and how you could utilize it best for your projects. Cause not everyone's gonna use it the same way and that's the beautiful thing about it. You just have to make sure that your frame rate lines up and everything should be good to go. But AI VFX are streamlining the process to get something good. It is near impossible to get this amount of texture in the matter of only an hour. I also enjoy keeping a log of my PYTTI prompts simply because it allows me to go back and forth and see the things that worked as well as the ones that didn't. It also helps to keep a reference image of what that prompt was spitting out so you know what areas you would like to take inspiration from. Now since the highest resolution you can use in PYTTI 5 is 800 by 450, you're gonna need to upscale. But first, we're going to need to denoise the image or else we're going to get a bunch of aliasing, which we don't want. To do this, I open up my noisy output that came from PYTTI5, I import it into After Effects, then I interpolate the frame rate to be 23.976, but you want this to match your footage. This is just where mine was shot at. I also change my color space to match. In this instance, it had to go from sRGB into Rec. 709. Also, very important, make sure your color space matches from your video source to your animation to your project file. Very important. Same with your frame rate. You want to keep these settings linear all the way through. After I've interpolated my PNG sequence in After Effects, I'll bring it on over to Media Encoder where I will export it as an H.264. This allows it to be easily opened inside of Premiere Pro, which is the software that I'm going to be using to denoise. I prefer using Neat Video's denoiser. I'll leave a link in the description below for that as well. However, I've heard that Topaz has a great image denoiser slash video denoiser. If you have that or any other software or plugin, you should use that. This is just what I have and it was relatively affordable. So if you don't have one, I recommend you check out Neat Video if not one of the other AI solutions. Also, a little side note, I do not have the video upscaler. I only have the image upscaler. So we are going to be exporting from Premiere into Media Encoder 
as a PNG sequence. So that way I can open it up into the Topaz image upscaler. I found luck with using the Art and CG preset, just increasing the strength by a shmi. And then I export all of the files to the same output directory. From there, I'm gonna wanna rename all the files, which can be done by selecting all and hitting F2, name it to your desired file name, importing into After Effects, where I will then reinterpolate to 23.976, changing my color management back over to Rec 709, just in case it got imported as sRGB, which might be a problem with my video file template. So I might wanna change that. Once you have it into After Effects, the world is your oyster. In this instance, I did some rough masking. I also utilized the luminosity of the image that I was basing it from to act as a luma mat, which gave me some interesting results because I was able to play with the intensity of the foreground versus the background without disrupting the image too much with a bunch of stylization that's unnecessary. Could also use a luma key and a color key. I would even recommend possibly changing the blend modes. But if you are going to use a mask on an object, I would recommend not stressing over getting a perfect roto and then cranking the feather as high as you possibly can. These are just the things that I was able to crank out in the first 15 minutes. Don't be afraid to keep on trying, and I would love to see your guys' results, so be sure to tag me on Instagram at I'm Hella OCD. I hope that this video can help speed run some of the learning process because I had issues getting started at the beginning. If you have any questions, please do not be afraid to leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're aware of the next time I post new videos every Thursday, and until next time, be sure to seize the day and keep learning.